Okay, in this tutorial we're going to um, go over some basic simulations using uh, Xscheme as a schematic capture tool and NGSpice as uh, the simulator. And um, we're going to start out by um, maybe making a folder inside the documents folder to um, store the files. So we'll call this maybe inverter tutorial. that down. We'll launch X scheme. Here I'm zooming in and out with the um, middle with the mouse wheel. And first thing we're going to do is instance some symbols. Um, you can go up to the tools menu and pull down to uh, insert symbol. There's a keyboard shortcut which is uh, shift I. And we'll go into the Mad VLSI library and grab an NMOS 3 and plop that down. Um, now uh, you'll notice here that uh, there's an instance name which is M1. There's the model name NFET underscore 018 01V8. That's basically sort of the normal sort of 1.8 volt NFET. There's a number of other types of devices. I think NFET 0 one V8 is probably the one that we're going to be using most often. And then this down here represents the width and the length of the transistor. So it's W over L, 1 by 0.15. And these are in units of microns. So this is a 1 micron wide device, and it's 150 nanometers long. And um, this has a multiplicity, uh, which is the M parameter, of 1. And that represents sort of a number of devices uh, connected in parallel. So a number of devices with these dimensions connected in parallel. And that's what's displayed on this particular MOSFET symbol. Okay, So this follows a normal convention that we uh, talked about in circuits, where um, since there's no body connection, uh, the default is assumed to be ground. Um, and then there's a similar PMOS symbol, so if we use the Shift-I shortcut, we can grab the PMOS 3 and plop that down. It's important to click somewhere else to deselect the thing that you just put down, so that when you go to instance something else, that's the previous thing isn't also selected. Um, you'll find that what you've just previously put down will have moved, if you if you don't, because it gets moved around with the uh, the next thing that you're putting down, if you don't deselect it first. So we're going to wire these things up. We need to wire the gates together. So we're going to use the W key as a shortcut for starting a wire. So we're going to wire the gates up and maybe create a little stub here. For the input. Wire the drains together. We'll stub for the output. And now we're going to need to uh, grab a VDD and ground symbol. So it's, uh, there's VDD. Plop that down. And then we'll get a ground symbol. Plop that down. Uh, now we're going to need a voltage source for VDD and for the input. So grab a voltage source. And we can put that over here. We're going to change the name by right-clicking on this. We can configure it, so we'll change this to VDD. And the value is going to be 1.8. That is the power supply voltage for this process. And we can grab the ground symbol by hitting, selecting it and hitting the C key to copy it. And then we can do the same for the VDD. Now you'll notice that there's some annoying things here where sometimes the circles don't render properly. We can either hit the escape key to redraw, or we can go out one step and in one step and zoom to get it to redraw. I'm not quite sure why that is, but let's suppose we want to make an input voltage source. So we can select the voltage source, the ground symbol, and hit the C key and make a second voltage source. We can configure it, change this to in and um, let's make this value zero. So we're going to do a DC simulation to do a DC transfer characteristic. Okay, so now we're going to need a couple more things here. So 
to grab the models. So you'll notice there's uh, different symbols here that um, say something something underscore models. So we have a TT, SS, SF, FF, and FS. These are called corner models. T stands for typical, F stands for fast, S stands for slow. And the idea is that um, the MOSFETs um, in a typical CMOS technology are subject to what are called run-to-run -run variation. And so in some runs, uh, the NMOS transistors might be a little on the fast side. Uh, in some cases, they might be a little on the slow side. Uh, the PMOS transistor similarly can be fast or slow. And um, these, these uh, SS, SF, FF, and FS models are called corner models. And these represent sort of the worst case variation in the slow and fast direction. And the TT models represent sort of the typical behavior, sort of the average behavior. And the idea is that um, by simulating your design with um, all four possible corner models, you, uh, you get a good sense for um, whether or not your circuit's going to break under worst case conditions. So mostly we're going to be simulating with the TT models, but uh, if you'd like to, uh, to do a corner analysis to verify your designs, that's not a bad idea uh, before you send it out to FAB. So we're going to grab the TT models, and um, that goes there. And now uh, we're going to grab some stuff from the uh, XScheme library. So if we go to the libs and we go into devices, uh, we're going to want a, let's see, it's code shown. And we're going to use this for telling spice what uh, what analysis we want to do so we're going to change the name here maybe to uh, spice and we're going to change the value from blah 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 to uh, dot dc for dc analysis and we're going to sweep v in from 0 to 1.8 and maybe 10 millivolt increments and we're going to put in dot save all so that we can get the, uh, anything we would like to plot and so click on OK and then uh, the last thing to do is we're going to put some uh, net labels here for the input and the output and connect this up to the input through a net label so those are again symbols so if we instance uh, I think it's called lab we'll use lab pin for this and so we're going to put that there and change the xxx to v in and then we can copy this and if we like we can rotate it by hitting uh, alt r a couple of times and then connect that up to our input source and now if we copy this over here we can change this to v out like so and maybe I want to move these up a little bit here and maybe move these over a little bit and then we can hit the F key to zoom in everything I don't know maybe move this down a little bit all right so now we're ready to go let's save this Save as, and we're going to go into Documents, Inverter Tutorial, and then change the name down here to, let's say, Inverter underscore VTC. And now, um, there's a couple of different ways that we can interact with the simulator from within X Scheme here. Um, show you the first one uh, so we click on netlist and this generates a netlist file which we can see if we go under simulation edit netlist it pulls up the netlist file that was just generated and here you can see uh, here we have the two transistors the, uh, the uh, NFET and the PFET or the NMOS and the PMOS and then we have the two voltage sources the VDD source and the input source these two lines were included from the TT models block and then these two lines come from our spice directive there code shown block 
And then these two global symbols have to do with these two uh, power, the global power flags here. Okay, so we're going to close this down. And now once we have the netlist, we can click on the simulate button. Now this takes a little while to simulate. My guess is that that's because the, um, the models are pretty horrendous in terms of the number of parameters and the complexity of all the different options um, and the different bins and whatnot. Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty pretty huge set of models in the PDK and it probably takes a while to grind on that. But once it's done simulating, uh, that little red button up there will stop being red and it'll pop, put up a dialog that tells us the, um, the simulation process was completed. There it is, we'll dismiss that, and we can click on Waves, and this will launch um, the Waveform Viewer, which is called GAW, and uh, we can make that bigger, and then we'll select this upper pane here, and then we can pick what we want to uh, look at. So here, via V out, there's our output voltage as a function of the swept input voltage, and we can plot the identity line here, and so that's our voltage transfer characteristic. So the, uh, the inverter's output is high when the input's low, and then it makes a rapid transition here with a fairly steep slope, and then it's low when the, output, when the input is high. And this point here, uh, which is about at, oh, I don't know, 830 some odd millivolts, is the transition threshold of the inverter. And if, you, if, you, if we like, we can also look at the uh, current flowing from VDD we select this pane down here and click on I of VDD. That shows us the current flowing from VDD. If you remember, the sign convention for currents is typically positive current flows into the positive terminal of the device. So in this case, the voltage source, the current's flowing out of the voltage source and into the PMOS transistor source. And so the current is uh, reported as negative here. Uh, so the maximum current appears to be about minus 20 microamps in this case kind of looks like an asymmetric bell-shaped curve with exponential tails, which is probably like what you might expect if you thought about it a little bit. So this is one way of um, interacting with the results of the simulation. I'll show you another way, uh, which might be appropriate in some cases. So if we go up here back to the sim uh, back to the X scheme and under simulation, configure simulator and uh, tools, here we have selected NG Spice batch mode. And if we like, we can also try uh, this option, which launches NG Spice in a terminal window. And when the simulation is done, it will drop us out into an NG Spice prompt. So if I click on Accept and Close, and then I uh, hit Simulate again, now instead of um, instead of not showing me anything, it shows me a terminal window here, and it shows me the output of NG Spice, and um, once, like I said, it completes, it's going to drop me out into an ng-spice prompt. And um, from there, we can do a number of different things, including plot the results of uh, the waveforms that were saved. Um, and that's all I'm going to be able to show you at this point. There's a whole ng-spice model, uh, I'm sorry, manual online that um, goes into a lot of detail about all the things you can do from this prompt. I will drop a, uh, a pointer to that in the description of the video. Uh, if you're curious about that, so here we can go plot, uh, let's say v, v of v out, and maybe v of uh, v in, and here we have our voltage transfer curve. So you can see something similar to what we had uh, in GAW. Um, all right, so that's that's the uh, more interactive mode. Quit that. And I'm just going to go back here and uh, change this back to uh, the batch mode. And um, okay, so let's uh, let's just save this, and then we'll save this as and do a transient simulation. Okay, so let's save as inverter tran. And um, we're going to have to make a couple of changes to this in order to uh, do a transient simulation. The first is going to be to change this from a DC to a TRAN. Uh, 
dot tran, and let's do um, let's do uh, do. 10 picosecond steps, and let's do one microsecond for the total time. And we're going to change the input voltage source from a DC to a pulse. And so this has this value has embedded spaces, so we got to put it in double quotes. So it's going to be pulse 0, 1.8. So it's a low value, low, vo low voltage, high voltage, and then the delay. 1 nanosecond, we use 1 nanosecond rise time, 1 nanosecond fall time, 4 nanosecond high time, and a 10 nanosecond period. And that will give us uh, basically a 4 nanosecond high time, a 4 nanosecond low time, 1 nanosecond rise and fall time, and it's going to be kind of shifted within the period by 1 nanosecond, that's the delay. And click on OK. Okay, so let's save that and generate the net list. Simulate. go and now let's launch go and then if we click on this we should be able to plot the input and the output and then if we zoom in a little bit we can see yay verily the output is the opposite of the input and you can see that uh, we have this kind of relatively slow rise and fall time the slow rates are fairly shallow here, and the output is a bit sharper. So the inverter sharpens up the slew rates for us, as you might expect. I might also be interesting to look at the current out of the VDD in this case. So if I select down here someplace, you'll notice that uh, the current is pretty low here when the output and the input are steady, but then uh, it kind of spikes up when the, uh, when the transitions are happening as you might expect from the voltage transfer curve and the uh, the current waveform that we looked at in the VTC. Okay, so um, that is uh, some basic SPI simulation using X-Scheme. Uh, probably the next tutorial will involve uh, how to make a, a hierarchical schematic, how to make a symbol with a sub-circuit underneath it, and how to do some simulations uh, using uh, using those kind of sub-circuits and whatnot. So uh, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.